Now let's talk about reclaiming your hope. We live in a world where hope is often in short supply. We live in a world that focuses so much on the negative and tends to put down the positive or ignore the positive. So what is it that brings you hope? What is it that keeps you hopeful? This is one of the most common questions people ask me. People ask me this question all the time. And sometimes when I really want to dig into a question, I ask myself, like, what is the opposite? I explore the wisdom of the opposite, try and go into the opposite and try and, try and work it out from that perspective. So in this case, I ask myself, what causes you to lose hope? And three things cause me to lose hope. Number one, I focus too much on myself. If I focus too much on myself, almost always can lose hope in a negative situation. Number two, I become impatient. I want to solve a situation faster than it can be solved, or, or I want to have my desired outcome come about faster than is possible. I become impatient. I become impatient. And the third thing is I lose perspective. I lose perspective because the reality is, is that if I look far enough into the future, my hope will always be restored. Now, sometimes in some situations, I have to look all the way into eternity for my hope to be restored. But the reality is, is that if I look far enough into the future, my hope is restored. And, and when I don't do that, I've lost perspective. I've lost perspective. I, I say, okay, I need to solve this today. Well, whatever I need to solve, it might take a week to resolve. If I, if, if I really force myself to resolve it today and it's going to take a week to resolve, what will happen? I, I, I begin to lose hope. I begin to get down. I begin to get into a, maybe a dark mood. And so sometimes what helps us to understand something, in this case, how do we keep our hope alive, what brings us hope, is to examine the very opposite of that thing. I think it's also important to remember that Hope is a supernatural gift, okay? Hope is a supernatural gift. There are things we can do to nurture it, okay? There are things we can do to nurture it. There are certainly things we can do to lose it. But at the end of the day, hope is a supernatural gift. And one of the ways that we foster hope, that we nurture hope, is by asking God to fill us with hope, especially in situations that are dark, especially in, in circumstances that are challenging our hope. But if we return to the question, you know, what is it that brings me hope? What is it that, that fills me with hope? There are two things. The first thing is our capacity for goodness. Am I blind to everything that's going on in the world? Am I blind to the darkness and the, and the evil in our world? No, I'm not. But what trumps that? Our capacity for goodness is... It's an astounding thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's an incredible thing. And if you really think about your own capacity for goodness and how impactful that goodness can be on other people's lives, and then if you multiply that by 8 billion people on the planet, you, you discover that our capacity for goodness can be the source of, of astounding hope. And the second thing that brings me hope is our ability to change. I've been doing this work for almost 30 years and I have seen people's lives change in ways that are humanly inexplicable. I have seen amazing things happen in people's lives, in people's marriages, in people's health, in people's personal finances, in people's careers, in every aspect of people's lives. I've seen ex extraordinary things happen. Why? Because when we open ourselves to God, when we open ourselves to the life that wants to live in us, the life of God, which is very different to the life that we're living, but when we open ourselves to the life that wants to live in us, the life that we're living changes. And so our capacity for goodness our ability to change, and my knowledge that God wants to help us in all of those endeavors is what fills me with great hope, even in the midst of darkness, even in the midst of darkness. 
The other thing I think nurtures my hope, that stokes my hope, when I get into places where I lose hope or I get a little bit down, is to look into the past. And when I look into the past, I see thousands and thousands of people who have shared their goodness and generosity with me on every continent in dozens of countries around the world. And so experience of people's goodness, experience of people's generosity isn't just an idea, it isn't just a theory, it is something that I have experienced in very real and living ways in so many places from so many people over the past 30 years and that fills me with incredible hope. As we look at these different areas of our lives, we talk about reclaiming them, collaborating with God to reclaim these different areas of our lives, enormous aspects of our self and life. Two things become very apparent. One, almost everything is a matter of perspective. Just by shifting the way we look at something can completely change our experience of that thing, of that person, of that situation, of that circumstance. The second thing we discover is that God is constantly trying to adjust our perspective on just about anything. There's a great story included in the book that I want to share with you that puts this point very, very clearly. Once upon a time, there was a boy who was growing up in a very wealthy family. One day, his father decided to take him on a trip to show him how other people who were less fortunate lived. His father's goal was to help his son appreciate everything that he had been given in life. The boy and his father pulled up to a farm where a very poor family lived, and they spent several days on the farm, helping the family work for their food and take care of their land. When they left the farm, the father asked his son if he enjoyed their trip and if he had learned anything during the time they had spent with this other family. The boy quickly replied, it was fantastic, Dad. That family is so lucky. Confused, his father asked the boy what it was that he meant. The boy said, well, we only have one dog, but they have four dogs and they've got chickens. We have four people living in our home, but they have 12. They have so many people to play with, and we have a pool, but they have a river that runs all the way through their property. We have lanterns outside, but they can go outside in the night and see the stars light up the sky. We have a patio, but they have the entire horizon. We have to go to the grocery store to get our food but they know how to grow their own food. We have high fences around our property to protect us, but they don't need those because their friends protect them. The father was speechless. And finally, the boy added, thank you, Dad, for showing me how rich people live. Everything is a matter of perspective. And God constantly trying to adjust our perspective, to realign our perspective, to bring our perspective in line with his reality.